Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 1st, 2022, Crown 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new hurricane to be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next seven days. We got a storm alert at the other and more tropical storms that are likely to form. So let's go and jump into that thing. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that we have a few things this morning to talk about. First of all, in the central part of the Atlantic Basin, we have Invest Area 91L still hanging around and is expected to be moving towards the northwest over the next few days. The overall uncertainty has only grown with the storm. We'll talk about that here in a moment. We have a new tropical depression. This is Tropical Depression 5 out here in the subtropical Atlantic, likely to become a hurricane sometime over the next few days. If you look here on the graphical tropical weather outlook, again, we have three systems that we are watching 91L, Tropical Depression 5, and 94L. This is a new invest out here in the East Tropical Atlantic with a low probability of developing. If you take a look here real quickly at Tropical Depression 5, again, right now sustained winds are at about 30 knots, about 35 miles per hour, although recent indications based on satellite do indicate that this could be a little bit stronger than that. Pressure is about 1,013 millibars moving towards the east-northeast at only 2 miles per hour, so it is moving very slow. Now, right back on Invest Area 91L down here in the subtropical, or in the tropical Atlantic, rather, we do notice that right now, still, we have a disorganized area of shower and thunderstorm activity centered uh, right around 16-ish north. And this is expected to be moving towards the northwest over the next few days, but the uncertainty has only grown from here in terms of the overall future of this cycle or of this potential cyclone. Now, if we look here at the bit of the recon plane that has been in there from earlier this morning, we notice that it is still finding a rather disorganized 91L and not really anything of significance. We do notice that there is at least a little bit stronger winds here on the northern side. At least the recon plane was picking up at least 30 to 34 knot winds. Uh, but overall, there's no real convective structure this morning, no indication of any low level circulation. And so this is definitely indicative that the storm is still going to struggle uh, as we progress through the next couple of days. Now, there's really a few ways that this could play out here. We'll take a look at one of those possibilities right now. This is the H4 forecast, the 200 millibar wind. So looking at about 39,000 feet in the atmosphere, this is the forecast of valid for 11 a.m. this morning, so roughly in about an hour. Uh, right now, again, it is indicating that pressures are about 1,008 millibars, which is more accurate in, in line with what we've been seeing over the past few days. We notice that we've had this tight, this upper level low here, the tropical upper tropospheric trough, basically shearing our system for the past several days. That is now beginning to move out of the picture, and we are starting to see some of that outflow begin to try to expand here on the northern side of this. But if we actually look at the moisture field, the problem is all of this dry air that is around on the western side. And the H wharf here is indicating that there is a moist pocket right here. But if you actually look at what we're dealing with here, there's not really a significant moist pocket. And in fact, you can actually see uh, on some of the peripheral storms, we notice that there is a little bit of outflow. You can kind of see even on the southern side, here's an outflow boundary here. So this is indicative that there's still a lot of dry air around and near the storm environment. Uh, but we have seen some gradual moistening over the past few days. Now, if we look at what the H wharf does predict, it predicts that this will still struggle. We notice that there's still some of that dry air around. And one of the reasons why it's still struggling a bit besides the dry air is notice how it is displaced from this upper level anticyclone. And so it does have a little bit of a tougher time because this is not already a strong system. It has a tough time dealing with that. Now, eventually this aligns and starts to try to intensify here down into at least what in this run would be a, probably a strong category two hurricane. But we notice again, it's enveloped within its own moist pocket at this point and the dry air is kind of kept around the storm environment. Uh, however, there is some other models that really disagree with this. And one of those such models would be the European. We'll take a look at that forecast now. This is the zero Z run uh, valid for 11 p.m. Uh, so this was the 11 p.m. Uh, run there. Now, we'll move this out to about current time. This is about 2 p.m. right now. We notice that the European has this storm right here. This is actually 93L, Tropical Depression 5 up here. 
Uh, but here's 91L down here. And we noticed that again in the model forecast. You notice how the past few days it was actually developing a very potent storm. Well, now it's not even there. And if you jump back to the zero Z runs from yesterday, we noticed that again, it is vastly different and further towards the Southwest. And the European actually does not go on to develop this system at all into any meaningful um, circulation or cyclone. And so it just kind of dies out there in the uh, Southwest Atlantic because the conditions are pretty hostile out there. So there is a little bit of discrepancies. Now, if we look at uh, what the GFS forecast has, for example, the 60 run uh, does have a very strong hurricane form out of that and carries it towards the north and east. So what exactly is going to happen? Well, the European Ensemble forecast here at the end of the run, this is our 144, we still see that there is some variability. There is still some ensemble members that do develop this into a at least somewhat of a storm. Some of these are hurricanes. Some of these are just tropical storms or depressions. And these stronger members tend to curve it more towards the north and east. While there are some weaker members in here, and the majority of the weaker members are further west and southwest and carry this closer to the Bahamas. Now, the environment over in the Bahamas is going to be quite unfavorable. If we look at the GFS ensembles and we'll look at that 200 millibar wind, we notice that uh, by about hour 156 here, this is by September 7th, we notice that there's not really a lot of favorable conditions to be found out here in the Southwest Atlantic and the Bahamas. And that is likely to be the case for the, the next while. In fact, we have some pretty dry, stable air around there. And it does not seem to want to change around. And we still have some pretty strong uh, wind cutting across this area for a while. And it doesn't look like that favorability will arise until after uh, September 11th or so. So likely not going to be anticipating much in the way of significant development if this even does find its way west. However, I'm still inclined to believe that a middle ground somewhere probably like that will be what we end up with, um, but we'll just have to continue to monitor everything there. But I'm not really that concerned right now for land impacts at this moment. Now, focusing on uh, Tropical Depression 5, again, we've had this system that formed pretty rapidly from an old frontal boundary, and this has now become a pretty solid cyclone, honestly and is trying to develop, it, this is likely not an eye, this is probably just the fact that we've had these storms kind of forming around here. Um, however, this is definitely looking more and more like a bona fide tropical storm this morning. Again, sustained winds were around 30 knots, 35 miles per hour. This is likely now higher, and this will continue to intensify over the next several days while moving very slowly. If you look at the GFS evolution of this here, this is the 060 run valve for 2 a.m. this morning. We'll move this out in time. This does strengthen by 36 hours into a hurricane. So this will likely be Hurricane Danielle. And this is going to meander around for the next several days before finally getting kicked off towards the north and east there and eventually could merge with another upper level low. Several disturbances and then we have the evolution here, the very uncertain evolution of, of uh, 91L entering the picture here by uh, September 8th. So we have a very uncertain future ahead. I'm not really inclined to believe that any part of Europe right now is under the gun for potential impacts of this system, but it will become a hurricane. It could become quite a powerful hurricane up there in the subtropical Atlantic. We'll have to see what that does to some of the sea surface temperatures and whether or not that can reshift the balance down into the deep tropics to get more instability down there. So just a lot of things to think about over the next several days. But so far, I'm not seeing any significant land impacts. And real quickly, in the East Pacific Basin, we could be dealing with a storm. The GFS has been pretty consistent on bringing a storm into the Baja Peninsula uh, sometime around September 7th or 8th. We'll have to see if this is going to happen. But either way, it is just something to mention and we'll focus more on that in tomorrow's outlook, all right? So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.